In South Africa, we look at parabolic antennas with the receiver in the middle. They look at higher frequencies, so meaning from 350 megahertz all the way to 50 megahertz. It's a dry area, very deserty. We chose this for scientific reasons because urban areas will introduce RFI, so which is radio frequency interference, so away from GSM, Wi-Fi, and so on. So we don't actually get to interfere with the telescope observations. The first four dishes are going to be in addition to the existing uh, Meerkat telescopes in there, which is operated by South African Radio Astronomy. When the whole telescope is built together and finished, we will talk about hundreds of kilometers spreading across South Africa. Over the lifetime of the project, we are looking at building 197 dishes. First four dishes, we'll be able to put the whole system together. We will learn more about our own system. We have to allow a learning period where we test and verify the project. And then if it doesn't work as intended, we then modify the dishes before we move on to the next milestone. So in China, we are working with SETC54. It's a Chinese Institute for Electronics and Communications. And then SETC54 is based in uh, Xijiazhuang, which is just uh, an hour south of Beijing by fast train. We've just uh, witnessed the first production dish being put together in China, uh, which is gonna be replicated in South Africa. So what they've done in China is putting the pedestal, the main reflector, sub-reflector, dish control system together. Um, it was nice to see that all coming together and everything fitting as expected. And then it will give us confidence that whatever we're going to build in South Africa will be working as expected. The first dish being integrated here at Safety Fit 4 can produce more time for SK construction. So the shipment of second antenna is about two months. But using this antenna, we can bring the verification test ahead. Eventually, it will be assembled again in South Africa with other three antennas. The challenging is we need to keep the posture and position of major components precisely. We have been working with SKO to establish a solid integration and verification process to help us manage this risk. This is the anechoic chamber. It's for testing the RFI performance of the devices. This is the, uh, the receiving antenna operating frequencies 50 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. And this is from 1 gigahertz to 18 gigahertz. We are lucky CTC54 joined the project at the very beginning. We learn more during the project we discussing with the astronomer, a scientist very closely. Science and the technology industry can improve each other by this project. To build a dish like this is um, not an easy task for anyone um, because it's not just on the one person building this, you collaborate with a lot of other people from different places. When I got to witness and see the system being put together and then see the performance, it was a great sense of uh, feeling of achievement. Maybe one of the primary goals of uh, the SKO project is science and learning more about the universe and so on. But one opportunity that I think um, I've learned and I've learned to appreciate is people. You know, everything you have to do in terms of technology, engineering, it's all to serve people, really. So for me, if we can learn how to work together with people all over the world, knowing that really, fundamentally, as people, we are all the same.